There's been a lot of discussion about the events of the last couple of days, so I'd like to address it myself. I think there's been a consensus that political rhetoric has really gotten way, way overheated all across the political spectrum. We've heard uh, facilities on the U.S. border called uh, concentration camps. We've seen the far left throw accusations of racism at everyone, anyone who disagrees with them on anything, including the Speaker of the House. We've seen a freshman Democratic Congresswoman use anti-Semitic tropes and imply people only support Israel because of uh, campaign contributions. The most uh, vile accusations and insults against our nation have become incredibly routine, and we've seen back and forth of the past few days. Most of you know Justice Scalia was my sort of all-time favorite. Now, here's what he used to say. He said, I don't attack people, I attack ideas. And I think that's a good lesson for all of us. From the president to the speaker to freshman members of the House, all of us have a responsibility to elevate the public discourse. Our words do matter. We all know politics is a contact sport. But it's about time uh, we lowered the temperature uh, all across the board. All of us ought to contribute to a better level of discourse. That said, when the president uses such language that's so far over the line, regardless of what their points of view are or policies, doesn't that undercut your argument that these issues are, are, are a problem, that these policies, these approaches are a problem for the country? Doesn't that undercut your argument when you use well, it? Well, obviously, I think it's a good idea to focus on what uh, our Democratic colleagues are up to. Uh, the Green New Deal, their version of it would take away your job. Uh, Medicare for all would take away your private health insurance. And if they made any effort to pay for all of this, they'd have to go after the most productive parts of our economy. Because remember, the top 10 percent of taxpayers provide 70 percent of the revenue for the federal government. So I think this is a prescription for slowing America to a crawl. And uh, I think it's also important to remember that most countries that ended up adopting socialism did it by voting for it. Uh, as Margaret Thatcher once said, the problem with socialism is pretty sure you run out of other people's money. So yes, I think we're better off to talk about the policies of our adversaries. And as I said earlier, and I think quite clearly, lower all this incendiary rhetoric, everyone involved should do that. Senator McConnell, 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 you're married to an immigrant who's a naturalized immigrant who's a naturalized U.S. citizen. Someone were to say to her she should go back to her country because of her criticism of federal policies. Wouldn't you consider that a racist attack? <laughs> well, the Secretary of Transportation came here at age eight legally, not speaking a word of English, and has realized the American dream. And I think all of us think that uh, this is a process of renewal that's gone on in this country. Uh, for a very long time, and it's good for America, and we ought to continue it. But what if it was it racist back? for him to say go back? Was it racist for him to say go back to your country? Say As I said, uh, the, the, the legal immigration has been a uh, fulfilling of the American dream. The new people who come here have a lot of ambition, a lot of energy, tend to do very well and invigorate our country. And my wife's a good example of that. Would you ever use? The words go back to where you came from? <laughs> Look, I, I'm obviously a big fan of legal immigration. It's been a big part of my family for a quarter of a century. As I look around the country and watch uh, the contributions that have been made by new arrivals and the children of new arrivals, it's been reinvigorating America for hundreds of years. So I'm a big fan of legal immigration. <laughs> rhetoric if Republican leaders like yourself spoke out more forcefully against it? Well, I think I've just said, I think everybody ought to tone down their rhetoric. We have examples of that across the ideological spectrum in the country, all across <laughs> it. Everyone ought to tone down their rhetoric, and we ought to move back to talking about the issues. But you stopped short of calling his comments racist. Look, I... The, 
I'm sorry? You've stopped, sh but you've stopped short of calling his comments racist. Well, the president's not a racist. But the well, the president's not a racist. And I think the tone of all of this is not good for the country. But it's coming from all different ideological points of view. That's the point. Uh, to single out any segment of this, I think, is a mistake. There have been this kind of rhetoric from a whole lot of different sources all across the uh, ideological spectrum in our country. All right, Senator uh, McConnell with Senator McConnell there with his second crack at the mic and saying very forcefully, very clearly that the president is not a racist. Excellent question, John, from our Manu Raju, who pressed him on the fact that Mc Senator McConnell's own wife is an immigrant, came here to this country not uh, speaking English, as the senator pointed out. Um, and then he tried to, to turn it into a, a, a comment about legal immigration. He did, and he, did, he refused to answer the question twice. Do you think the remarks were racist? Then he did say he didn't think the president, he said the president didn't say he think, he said the president is not a racist. Right. Um, look, he's a very good politician. He knows how to not to answer a question. He knows how I to saw deflect. Him chuckling there. Yeah, he knows how to dodge. Well, that's a nervous chuckle, though. Yeah. It's a nervous chuckle because uh, the the old Mitch McConnell, I was going to call him the real Mitch McConnell, I don't know if that's fair, the old Mitch McConnell is for legal immigration, was open to negotiating with President George W. Bush, for example, about sweeping comprehensive reform that would have given legal status to people who came into the country illegally. Uh, he's in a very different box now because of right. the current occupant of the White House, but that was, again, that was a, a punt uh, from the leader there. Um, and so, but here's the debate the Republicans are in. If you accept Mitch McConnell at his word and the president at his tweet, the president says he's not a racist. So the debate is, is the president a racist or a race baiter? Right. That's the debate the Republican Party's in the middle of right now? Uh, that's not where you want to be. But, uh, Abby, aren't we risking convoluting these two things anyway? This is not about immigration. Three it's of really these congresswomen yeah. were born here. It's the fourth really was not. naturalized. And yes, in that case, you could say it was about legal immigration. Well, uh, Ilhan Omar was a refugee. So right. she, you know, right. she came here fleeing something and, we, and our la world. laws allow for that. Uh, so it is not at all about immigration, except in that what the president really doesn't like that they're doing is criticizing his immigration policy on the border. So McConnell is trying to do some backflips to try to get around the real issue here, which is not just this moment, but the president's very long history of these types of moments, going all the way back to the birther controversy, right. which was really his original go back moment, in which he said to the first black president, you are not an American. You were not born here when he was, in fact, born here. And trying to scare uh, up the fact that, that he, or trying to, to make people think that he was Muslim. Exactly. So this is not about, it's not about legal immigration. It's not about illegal immigration. It's not about asylum seekers. It's not about any of that. It's about whether or not people in this country have a right to criticize this country without being told, go back to where you didn't come from. None of these people came from those places. They, the three out of the four of them were born in this country. Ilhan Omar has been here since she was a child. Uh, th this is not about immigration. I, Mitch, I think Mitch McConnell knows that. And to the point Abby made earlier, for example, when he criticizes Bernie Sanders, he doesn't say go back. Right. He calls him a socialist. Uh, right. So why he's a white man? Uh, there's just the facts are the facts here. Uh, the president uses certain language in certain situations. He could have the socialism debate. He could have the Omar anti-Semitic debate anytime he wants. We we all know he has this Twitter platform and he uses it to his advantage. Uh, he did this against four women of color and he said go back. Uh, that is the source of this. Uh, Backflip's a good word for it. Leader McConnell was trying to just get somewhere else. Let's get to a safer conversation because he doesn't want to stay in this conversation. And that's his politics. That's what he's supposed to do as the leader of the party. But what the president said in, those, in that tweet, go back, is racist, period. Does, does the, the, in Senator McConnell's comments there, does he uh, sweep this under the rug or does he fuel this controversy for a little bit longer? Oh, it's impossible to answer that question in the sense that we have just lived through the Trump age. And to Abby's point and to your point about the birther controversy, remember this goes back to businessman Donald Trump too, the Central Park Five. Um, the Trump Organization settling a rent discrimination suit against black people. This is a gutter the president has lived in for a very long time as a businessman and as a politician and now as president of the United States. He has lived in this gutter. He's comfortable in this gutter. This is what he likes to do. Uh, will it end? This is what Republicans have always done, whether it's Charlottesville, whether it's other tweets from the president. They just hope, deflect, 
do a backflip, as Abby said, get out of the way, duck, hide, whatever you have to do, and hopefully tomorrow some other controversy will start up that's more favorable. And President right. Trump has made a career out of coming back from moments like this time right. and time again. That's what Republicans see, and that's what makes it, makes it so difficult for them to figure out what to do next, because even while some of them have not survived the president's political controversies, right. he has survived them.